Hey, Josh Powers with Quixel, and today we're going to continue our series on Mixer's Map Stack by going over the incredibly useful Map Component. So let's get started. The Map Component feature inside Mixer allows you to use a texture image as a mask. This component will not only let you apply custom masks that you've maybe extracted from photos or generated in other software, but it also lets you leverage the Megascans library, giving you thousands and thousands of surfaces to choose from, all without having to leave Mixer. The first drop down menu has three options Custom Image, Layer Map, and Library Asset. Custom Image is the default setting, so we'll start there. As you probably guessed, Custom Image will let us choose an image file on our computer to use as a mask. With Custom Image selected, we can move to the next drop down and either choose a custom image that's already been used, or we can click on Add Image to select a new custom file. Then we simply choose the mask we want in the scene, and voila, the image is now acting as our mask in this layer. But we're not done yet. As I mentioned before, we can leverage the power and quality of the Megascans library with this component. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Let's change the dropdown from Custom Image to Library Asset. We can now browse the library for a Megascan surface that will most closely fit our needs. This setting not only works with Megascan surfaces, but also atlas maps, 3D assets, imperfections, and displacements. So let's go ahead and select this material here, and right away you can see we have a new mask based on this surface. You might have noticed that a new dropdown has appeared under this setting. This dropdown lets us choose the texture type from the surface to use as a mask. Right now we're using the surface's ambient occlusion map, but we can choose the surface's albedo, cavity, displacement, and so on. The texture files associated with that surface that you've downloaded should be accessible in this dropdown, giving you a lot of different looks and options to work with for every surface. This is a really fun and great way to explore different looks and ideas for your textures, and you might be surprised how an unrelated surface might give you the exact look you're going for. So be sure to give it a try. One of our major focuses on Mixer is optimization, and with optimization in mind, we also added the layer map option for this component. So what is layer map? Well, layer map will allow you to utilize any of the layers currently in your mix for your map mask. This operates the same way as the library asset option, except that the library in this case is only what you already have loaded in your scene. So if I select this rusted metal sheet, which I already have loaded in my layer stack for some detailed normal information, I can use any of the texture types I have associated with this surface for my mask, just like the library asset option. However, by utilizing textures that are already loaded into the mixer scene, I'm saving on memory, which helps keep my mix optimized and running smoothly. As you spend time texturing an asset with a variety of Megascan surfaces, you'll be surprised at how often you can achieve the look you want by using data already loaded into your scene. Underneath that, we have a few more settings. Normalize will allow you to normalize the range of pixel intensity values of the map. Invert will, of course, invert the results and then range, which behaves the same way as the other components we've gone over. Left slider brings out the darks, right slider brings out the whites. Bring them close together for a hard, sharp transition. Now let's take a moment and put this powerful component to some practical use. Here we have a small ammo can from the Megascans library. It already looks great, but say we wanted to dirty it up a bit more for a scene that we're making. Well, the map component in conjunction with some Megascans is a great way to do that. The first thing we'll do is activate the stain layer, which is a rusted metal surface from the library that is color matched to the base albedo for the ammo can. We'll give the layer a mask stack and then we'll add a map component. We'll set the drop down to library asset and then click on the folder icon to select a surface. Again, while any surface can be used, I find imperfections to be an amazing way to rapidly add realistic detail to the material so for this layer, let's go ahead and select this leakage imperfection right here. Let's go into mask mode and then set the texture to mask. Now we just need to play with the range a little bit so that we can bring out the details of this imperfection. And there we go. That's looking pretty nice, but let's hop back to the mask and we'll add another map component. Choose the library asset mode. And then select this happy little grunge texture here to go on top of the leakage texture. Again, we'll just dial in the range sliders to get the value we want, and then set the blend mode to add so that the brighter pixels are all transferred to the layers below. Now this is feeling a bit too bright, so we can pull back on the opacity some to make this effect a little more subdued. There we go. 
And just like that, we've added some nice stains and detail that not only break up the albedo value of the can, but also the roughness, which will really pop with some of those nice glancing angles. All right, let's add some dirt and grime to build up in some of these crevices. For this, I'm using a sandy surface from the library, and all I've done for this layer is played with the scale, and then set the albedo to more of a grayscale value with the blend mode set to multiply. Let's give it a mass stack, and then throw on a map component. Okay, for this one, we're going to set the source to use a layer map, and then we're going to actually select the 3D asset as our source. This allows us to use any of the 3D mesh's source textures as our mask. We'll click on the drop down menu and then select the asset's AO or ambient occlusion map. If we return to mask mode, you can see that it looks like we're displaying the asset's AO map, but in reality, this is our current mask. Now we want this dirt and grime to build up near crevices and such, and all places where an AO map would get dark. So to make this AO map act that way, we want to invert the results. Then we'll just pull on the right hand range slider to have the mask expand out a little further and you can see we were able to quickly get some dirt building up near the crevices. However, we can make things a little more interesting by adding another map component on top of this. We'll again set this to layer map, and we'll select the dirt grime layer we're currently working on. We'll leave the dropdown set to albedo, and then we'll just adjust the range to give us a nice contrasting speckled look. Then we merely set the blend mode to overlay, which will give us a nice speckled fall off on the mask. It's a subtle addition, but it really helps sell the transition from the dirty crevices more naturally than just a gradient fall off. And then finally, let's add a bit more rust and darkness to the corners of the box. We'll activate the layer, give it a mass stack, and then we'll start off with the curvature component. Be sure to set it to edges only, and then we'll bring the right handle of the range way down to give us some nice bright edges. Now this is looking pretty good on its own, but it's feeling a little bit too uniform in the rust and wear. So what we can do to fix this is add a map component on top of the curvature. We'll set this to layer map, and then we'll use the stains and leak layers using the roughness map from the surface, and then we'll really crunch the range sliders together at the low end to give us a strong contrast. And then all we need to do is set the blend to multiply. By multiplying this map component over the curvature, we've removed chunks of the curvature results to break up the more procedural appearance of the curvature component and add some more natural shapes and grunge to it. And if we go back to PDR mode, we can see the final results. I hope this tutorial was helpful and that you were able to see why the map component is one of my go-to features inside the mass stack. It, along with the thousands of surfaces in the Megascans library, allows you to quickly add photorealistic detail to your textures with just a few clicks. And when used in collaboration with the powerful procedural components of the mass stack, you have the ability to build incredible textures faster than ever. We appreciate you watching this tutorial series on the Mixer mass stack and can't wait to see what you create. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.